Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has refused to pay her house dues to the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. And what we're really talking about is weird inside politics that most people probably don't care about. So let me just break it down for you. Basically, AOC has raised nearly $5 million. The Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee wants to help use some of that money to fund other Democrats to win the House majority or to defend it in 2020. AOC is refusing to pitch in and many people are upset, some even calling her a deadbeat. But she's actually calling on Democrats to stop funding the DCCC, basically declaring war on the Democratic establishment. After this controversy exploded, she's defended her position, saying that why should we fund them if they're not going to allow progressive groups to run primaries against Democrats? Basically, she's saying, I want to upset the Democratic incumbents and bring in far left insurgents. And if you won't allow it, I'm going to tell my base to stop donating to you. This is just generally bad news for Democrats. And I'll show you why. Look, the far left is not going to win. Okay. We've seen in the Gallup poll, if you, if you saw the video I did the other, uh, yesterday morning or the day before, that the country actually ticked towards conservative and less people now identify as liberal. So it's all bad news for the Democrats that they've got a far left activist contingent targeting them, AOC refusing to back down and escalating the war now. Something interesting happens. You see, earlier today, I was admittedly kind of bored. Like there's not a whole lot of news. It's a Saturday, right? It's Saturday, right? And I, I'm, I'm admittedly, it's a slow day. The, the, the years always start, uh, the year always starts slow. And I didn't know if there was going to be really anything to talk about until I saw this, an advertisement targeting me from Ocasio-Cortez. And I thought to myself, I, I don't live in her district. Why is she trying to get money from me? I basically live in, I live in uh, New York's first district. It's blue. Not New York. I'm, I'm sorry, New Jersey. I don't live in New York. So I decided to look into her ads. And as it turns out, AOC, since the start of the year, has spent around 30, uh, she spent $34,382 in the past seven days from January 3rd till the 9th. And she's actually run from the, from December 31st till today, what I believe around 780 advertisements. It may actually be like 770, but I think, I think the, the total number might be 782 ads. Ocasio-Cortez is running a massive ad blitz, okay? Spending around $35,000, not the biggest amount, but it is just a week. But interestingly, one of the talking points of her ads is that she is facing 11 challengers. Do you know what that means? Eight of them, I believe, are Republicans and the other three are actually Democrats. Ocasio-Cortez is actually campaigning on the fact that Democrats are trying to unseat her. Now, there's been other issues here uh, uh, in, involving removal of AOC. We saw an op-ed from CNN saying Ocasio-Cortez should leave the Democratic Party. Of course, they don't want her here because she was complaining that Joe Biden and her shouldn't be in the same party. So we've got a far left war going on. We have this story now from a couple days ago. It says far left uniting for all out attack to block Joe Biden. So here's what I want to do. I want to talk about the latest battle between Ocasio-Cortez and the Democrats. They are actively trying to unseat her. Moderate Democrats running in her district. She's actually raising money based off that fact. Okay. She is telling people around the country that these people want to remove me and I need your money. So there's a couple things I want to address. The, the war between AOC and the Democrats, the ad spend and some of the ads and who she's targeting. And a big factor here that Ocasio-Cortez and actually a larger portion of Democrats get their funding from outside their district. Why it would seem that a good portion of the Democrats who won their congressional house seats, I believe around, you know, 65 to 70 percent uh, compared to Republicans. Are, uh, I'm sorry, let me put it this way. Of the people whose income, whose uh, donations primarily come from outside of their districts, it tends to be two thirds or more, almost double Democrat versus Republican. So Democrats are primarily winning by uniting with other big, wealthy urban districts to fund non-urban areas. I find that particularly interesting. And I'm going to show you the data. But before we get started, make sure you head over to my new channel, youtube.com slash Timcast IRL. A new show is starting soon. I've got some people coming out. It will be moderately co-hosted. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be relatively apolitical. So if you get, if, 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 it's, if you find it mind numbing, all of the crazy political talk inside baseball kind of stuff, make sure you go to youtube.com slash Timcast IRL, subscribe. I've done a couple streams. I might do a stream later, but admittedly I'm waiting for, I got to have a building inspector come in and stuff like that. But it, within about a week, 
We should be ramping up. You're going to see a major upgrade on this stuff. But let's get to the news. You may have seen the story. AOC riles Dems by refusing to pay party dues, bankrolling colleagues, opponents. Now, this isn't necessarily new information. You see, if we go back in time, do I have the tweet? Yes. I think it's uh, back in March of 2019. AOC actually tweeted, the DCCC's new rule to blacklist and boycott anyone who does business with primary challengers is extremely divisive and harmful to the party. My recommendation, if you're a small dollar donor, pause your donations to DCCC and give directly to swing candidates instead. She then calls out Mike Levin of California, Lauren Underwood, a a bunch of other Democrats. This is not the first time AOC has straight up said, don't give your money to the Democratic wing, the the, the organization that seeks to get congressional candidates reelected. Give it to the insurgent candidates who are going to primary them and remove them. And that has been the far left and AOC's primary strategy the whole time. I can respect it to a certain extent, but it's also, listen, AOC has been telling Democrats what they should or shouldn't be doing. She's been pressuring Democrats to vote certain ways. She slammed Nancy Pelosi and other Democrats for not supporting impeachment, then later went, oh, I'm totally over it. And she's going to unseat them anyway. This is a common tactic of the far left, that no matter what you do, no matter if you apologize, no matter if you agree, they will not play ball. You can take a look at Chick-fil-A, right? Did you see that story? The CEO regrets their decision that they, they essentially said, we're not going to donate to these organizations. We're going to donate to different organizations, essentially bending the knee to far left activists who are still campaigning to get them removed. The apology did nothing. So Nancy Pelosi bends over backwards and says, fine, we'll do impeachment. Where are we at now? Well, impeachment's been a disaster. It's helped Trump immensely. And what is Ocasio-Cortez's response? Did she come around and say, thank you for playing the way I want you to play? No. She said, even if you do what I say, we are still coming for you. We will still fundraise against you. And I will actively reject contributing to your campaigns. And that's where we're at now. Ocasio-Cortez defends decision not to pay House Democrats campaign dues. And it's, it's kind of simple. She basically just tweeted. I don't know if I need a whole story for it. She said, In response to a story that said Scoop, she was withholding a quarter million dollars in dues. She said, I give quite a bit to fellow Democrats. We fundraised over 300,000 for others, with over 50% going to swing seats. DCCC made clear they will blacklist any organization that helps progressive candidates like me. I can choose not to fund that kind of exclusion. So it is fair to point out that the, the, the establishment Democrats are actively doing that and she's pushing back. But at the same time, don't be surprised if they reject voting with you, if you are actively pushing against them. As I've stated many times, we don't have two political parties. We have three. We have the progressives, the Democrats, and the Republicans. And the progressives and the, and, and, and the other Democrats do not agree and are actively fighting each other. But let's do this. Let's take a dive right now into the ad campaigns being run by AOC. This, is, this appeared on my Facebook page which I find kind of funny because I guess it means that they think I'm a progressive, but hey, surprise, surprise. AOC's ad reads, 11 candidates are running to unseat me in the House. They've already raised more than $1 million to spend against us. In response, we set a very specific goal of raising $849,119 this month, the exact amount two of our Republican opponents raised to spend against us. Our average donation right now is $16.81, so we need about 50,512 contributions to meet our goal. And we've just started, so we're only 7% of the way. Can I count on you to donate today? Well, me, no, because I don't live in your district, and I do find it very strange that this is how politics is basically run in this country. Not a fan. I also find it kind of funny that the donate button isn't real on the ads, but I'll show you that in a second. I decided to pull up Facebook's ad library. They show you all of the ads she's, she's bought. And I started scrolling down and I kept scrolling down and I scrolled down more. And eventually I got tired and I just jumped way, way down. And it appears I could be wrong on the number, but uh, around approximately 782 uh, ads since the start of this year. From January 3rd to the 9th, we can see she spent just around close to $35,000, $34,000. And let's take a look at some of the ads. You'll, I, I find this very interesting. In one ad that was less than $100, she got two to 3,000 impressions, mostly in California. You can see it mostly targeted women. I'm not sure if that was the intent. It it doesn't appear to show me who she's actually targeting with these ads, or I I couldn't find it. In another ad, she seriously targeted women. And again, 
New York, Texas, California. Another ad I pulled up, mostly men, again, New York, Texas, California. And that seems to be the case. Now, I think it's fair to say it could just be because there's massive urban centers. Facebook's going to deliver ads. If they're not saying where they want the ads to go, it might end up more so in some of these more populated states. I think it's fair to point out. However, it does mean that AOC is going to be collecting a substantial amount of money from outside of her district. And this story from August 28th, 2018 says exactly that. Most campaign contributions come from outside candidates' districts. Now, this is actually not true for everybody, but we can see. But as of August 28th, this is before I believe AOC actually officially won. She did win the primary. Look where her donations come from. Only 5% at the point of this, of this story actually came from her district. Around 43, 43.5% did come from her state. So that's a bit fair, but it came from major urban centers. The Bay Area, Los Angeles, San Diego, Miami, Austin, Hawaii, Chicago. I think it's pretty obvious, right? But let's do this. Here's, a, here's a, 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 some data from Open Secrets, in district versus out of district. Now, most candidates who are, are fundraising and aren't particularly famous, they, they are mostly in district donations and very small amounts. AOC is not the worst. In t- in, so this is 2018 data. We can see that TJ Cox, of uh, a Democrat from California, raised 0% uh, from, from their district. Okay. Then we have a Republican who is 99% out of district, but only raised $82,000. I think it's important to point out many of these candidates raised only a couple hundred grand or less, but many of the Democrats are raising millions. Gina Jones of Texas, 4.9 million with 99% coming from outside of her district. I'm not going to do a deep, deep dive, but what I can tell you is that I did a general analysis and found that around 70 or so of these these, these out of district candidates are Republican and around 130, 132 or so are Democrats. So Democrats are almost two to one more likely than Republicans to be funded from outside their districts. Now, listen, it's legal. There's free speech. You don't have to live in someone's district to, to, to fund uh, their campaign. But I do, I do really, really not. I don't like that idea, right? I kind of feel like you should be funded by and represent the people in your district. Because imagine this. Let's say you live in a district that's got fresh, natural spring water, and the people of that district, for the most part, are actively campaigning, saying we don't want Nestle or whoever coming in and taking our spring water. And then sure enough, certain districts and PACs and people who like what Nestle does or some other company starts dumping ridiculous cash into your campaign or using super, cap, super PACs to run commercials to benefit you. You end up winning and you turn around and say, Thanks for the support. Water is all yours. If the will of the people locally who are actively paying attention and campaigning cannot compete with massive funding and commercials from outside the district, then you're going to get a lot of people who are going to be misinformed and vote against their own interests. Ocasio-Cortez won through a primary. We can see here that only 94% in 2018 actually came, I'm sorry, 6% came from within her district at $1 million, 94 from outside of her district. And now we, 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 uh, we know she's raised around $5 million and she's actively soliciting donations from the rest of the country. Again, nothing illegal here. I just find it particularly interesting how this politics is run and that it is mostly Democrats doing that. Here's what the ad says when you click. Alexandria is fighting for progressive policies that can help create social, racial, and economic justice for all. That's why she's taking $0 from corporations and lobbyists and is relying on the grassroots to power her campaign. That's actually true. She really is doing that. I do think it's really, really silly, though, when they say they don't take money from corporations because a cursory Google search will reveal corporations can't actually make donations to political campaigns. I get it, though. They're talking about political action committees that receive, you know, they're, ta- they're, they're, they're simplifying it. So I, th- I think it's fair to point out AOC absolutely is keeping tr- true to her word. Almost all of her donations, I believe, do I have the number pulled up? Here we go. 81.43 for this current election cycle come from small individual contributions below $200. 18% are from large contributions and 0.39 come from political action committees. She's got a, a minus of other, I don't know what that means. She, how, do you, how do you donate negatively? Whatever. The point is, it is fair to say, yes, AOC is not taking money from PACs. She is doing small donations through ad campaigns. Take it for what it is. Now let's get to the final point. If you've made it this far and you actually care about this stuff, congratulations. 
Ocasio-Cortez is campaigning on the fact that it's not just Republican challengers. Now, that is the focus of her campaign, but she seriously is targeting. She's being targeted by Democrats. You know, like I said, in that op-ed the other day from CNN, they said it's time AOC should leave the party. Democrats have called her a deadbeat and many don't like her. Now, there's a growing wing of progressives slowly taking over the Democratic Party. And because of the two-party system, well, it's actually really, really bad news. You see, by, by splitting up the Democratic coalition and, and fracturing them this way and campaigning against them, she is forcing these Democrats to focus on, st- on stopping Democratic primary challengers, spending their war chests to fight Democrats and not Republicans. You know what that means? Advantage Republicans. The Democrats right now, the 2020, fighting against Trump, Here's, a, here's the disadvantage. They're all fighting against each other. So they may be raising a ton of money, collectively more than Donald Trump to an extent, but they have to spend that money fighting each other and Trump only has to fight them. Now, Trump has been focusing more on Bernie Sanders because he's, he's taken the lead. I think it's fair to say the activists are going to elect Bernie Sanders. That's, that's kind of obvious. But when it comes to these congressional campaigns in 2020, not only do, is, is the Trump factor, the Trump base going to come out in droves. Not only are we seeing people less likely to identify as liberal, but you also have to consider that these incumbent Democrats are fighting off Ocasio-Cortez, not just Republicans. So they've got two, they've got to fight on two fronts. This is dividing and fracturing Democrats. And I think it's going to give a massive advantage to the Republicans. But this brings me to another op-ed. Chris Saliza of CNN says, is this Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's Democratic Party now? He goes on to talk about how the Democratic Party has increasingly become more progressive. And I think it's a fair point that, yes, for a long time, the progressives have been gaining ground. They want people like Bernie. Many of them are socialists. But something happened. Well, I think it's fair to point out AOC gained a lot of ground. There's a flippening happening. According to Gallup, and I showed this the other day, even within the Democratic Party, people are more likely to identify as conservative. What does that say for AOC? She can wage this war all she wants. And she's raising all of this money from outside of di- out of her district because progressives are banding together to try and upset the established order. I can respect that to a certain degree, but I kind of think I'm not, I'm not a fan of the policies she's promoting. I'm certainly not a fan of crony Democrats who literally do nothing. But they are trying to get rid of her in other ways. So is it her party? Not yet. I think it's a fair point to make. She's the future. I mean, she's got 5 million plus followers. She raised $5 million as a, a single term incumbent. That's amazing. That's, that's huge. The progressives are seriously waging this war. But here's a story from Town Hall. The potential loss of AOC's district highlights why Democrats fumed over Trump's proposed 2020 census changes. Many people within AOC's district are concerned she might actually lose her district. I believe it's not going to be till 2022. We'll see. I don't know when the redistricting will will come into play. It might be 2024. But right now, Democrats have actually talked about a plan to eliminate her district outright. You may be saying, so what? She'll still live in a congressional district. She can still run. Yes. But let's say there are, there's her district and two districts around her. And you've got person A, person B, and AOC. If her district gets erased, she is going to be challenging incumbent, another incumbent popular Democrat who is from the surrounding area. And they're going to point to all of the failures of AOC and say, do not let her take this. But not only that, in 2020, she's facing, I believe, three Democratic primary challenges. And I'm going to go ahead and say, I, I, I think she can lose this one. I really, really do. In 2018, Only about $60,000 from her campaign came from her own district. She was promoted and funded from outside the district, and she happened to be going up against someone who was arrogant and didn't think they could lose. Joe Crowley didn't even debate her, so he lost. She had a couple thousand more votes than him and won the primary and started immediately saying, I won, because we all knew it didn't matter who won the primary, that district is going Democrat. So there's something different happening today. She lost some, some 25 to 40,000 jobs to the Amazon deal, and the Democrats are going to be funding this. They thought of her as a fluke. They saw her as a nobody. She'll never win, and she did. What do you think the Democratic establishment is going to do now? I'll tell you this, man. Dark money will come a-flying. But I, w- I do want to point out the reason why they're so desperately trying to shut her down. 538 has the story. 
why the Democrats have shifted over the last 30 years. And I want to point something important. Check out this graph. We can see around the start of the 2010s, there was a massive spike in government helping black people, immigration, and paying for health care. Now, the health care thing, I think, is somewhat related, particularly with Bernie Sanders' growth in popularity and a lot of people pushing that out. But th- there's another fact I've pointed to a lot is that the, it's the rise of Facebook, the algorithm, and how it pushed out intersectionality. This resulted in people being inundated over and over and over again with racial justice ideas and then demanding it. It was an excellent ad blitz for people like AOC, who probably then just jumped on the bandwagon. And instead of pushing things that make sense, like, you know, sound environmental policy, she pushes equity for all and like free jobs or, you know, free college or whatever. But it was social media that drove this fracture. Not every Democrat is on social media. So you have the young people, primarily leftist, primarily believing this stuff, and the older generation that isn't on social media remaining more moderate. In the voter breakdown, we can see 18 to 34 leans for, Bern, uh, for Bernie Sanders just slightly. There's a big faction voting for, for, for Biden, even among 18 to 34 year olds. But beyond that, it is Biden all the way. It is the youth active on social media that were berated and inundated with this social justice content. And now they hold these views and you can see these spikes in LexisNexis data. But I leave you with this. AOC is not the only one waging war. From Fox News, far left uniting for all out attack to block Biden. They say from Politico, the progressive movement is kicking off 2020 with a full scale wackajo mobilization against the former vice president marked by intensified attacks and protests designed to bloody Joe Biden in advance of the Iowa caucuses. And in one of the latest polls, Bernie Sanders took the lead. Biden's down. They say the grassroots assault hit from a variety of angles starting Monday when the progressive change campaign committee demanded Biden retract statements about sexism in politics. Hours later, the group Indivisible uh, Indivisible criticized him over his immigration plan. Then activists aligned with the Sunrise Movement recently picketed him at a New York City fundraiser hosted by a billionaire. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter if Joe Biden is being propped up in the polls. Because I'll tell you this. When they poll Democrats, they're polling the passive Democrats. But I will tell you who's going to go out and vote the activists. It is my firm belief Bernie Sanders will take this one all the way. And that's going to pave the way for a massive Donald Trump victory because the average Democrat does not want socialism. The average Democrat is asked and they say Biden for sure. But the average Democrat won't vote in a primary. They will vote in the general. Well, I should I shouldn't say the average, but many Democrats are not going to vote in the primary. Bernie's base is going to go out in droves. They're going to appoint Bernie Sanders, the nominee, And then when it comes to general, Trump is going to have a massive landslide. I could be wrong, but I'll tell you this. I'll wrap this up. The Democrats are at war with each other, and that means they are fighting off attacks from each other. Now, now it's it's primary season. Of course, this is normal. But we're going into there's 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 congressional seats up for grabs. And that means going in 2020, it's not just about primaries. It's about moderate Democrats facing off primary challenges and they're going to lose. And it's about I'll tell you this, man. When the, when, when, the, when the progressive Democrats primary the moderates in the Trump districts, yeah, those, those districts are going Trump for a number of reasons. Now, I've said before, Trump's base will be out in 2020. So they're going to vote for Trump in bigger numbers and the Republicans will win back these districts. Also consider, if the Democrats primary the moderates with a progressive like AOC wants to do, it will swing even harder. I'll tell you what, man, you look at Jeff Van Drew, right? The guy who flipped parties and he's a moderate. You know, he, he's, he's gotten a good rating from the NRA and stuff like that. He's, he, he, he's, he's a moderate Democrat. He won because there were some, Demo- some conservatives willing to support him. You put Ocasio-Cortez in his district and it will be R plus 30 from all the people freaking out saying we do not want the crazy socialist lady representing our district. So if they primary like AOC wants to do, expect a Republican supermajority. I think the Democrats are in trouble. And I think the far left will likely still gain ground, likely still win because most of the Democrats are passive and don't care. The far left is going to take over and there will be a reckoning after 2020. If the Democrats don't get back on track and start catering to moderates again, because the Gallup poll shows us out of all the parties. So out of three factions, conservative, moderate, liberal, you've got 30 some odd percent conservative, 30 some odd percent moderate and 24 percent liberal and going down after 2020. There will be a reckoning and the Democrats 
We'll never win again if the progressives are allowed to keep taking over in these safe districts. These safe blue districts will become unsafe swing districts as people flock to the Republican Party in fear of whatever this is that AOC represents. I'll leave it there. Stick around. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. YouTube.com slash TimCastNews. It is my other channel, and I will see you all then.